This is the new Wellhouse Toyota Pro 8. It's based on the 3,100 kilo Toyota chassis. Wellhouse themselves, they've been around since 2002. They've won all sorts of awards. They're ISO 9001 certified. They're NCC members. This vehicle has whole uh, European type approval, which is worth knowing. It costs tens of thousands of pounds. They're also a Ford qualified vehicle modifier. There's only three camper van firms in Europe that have this rating. Why is that important for a Toyota? Well, it shows that they build them properly and they care about what they're putting together. This means the Toyota is built to a high standard. Um, you want proof of that? Well, it's got a five year warranty to stand on the base vehicle. And Wellhouse mirror that with their own habitation warranty. Um, it's subject to various terms and conditions. Have a look on their website. Um, but they're all reasonable, have the habitation equipment serviced annually, have the base vehicle serviced annually at the appropriate approved places. So let's go and see how it drives. First thing you'll notice, uh, all the controls are very light. Clutch, accelerator, brake pedal, all very easy and car-like. Steering's quite low geared, but feels nice, feels positive. Um, this particular one is 120 PS one, but should be absolutely fine for most people. But obviously, if you're going to do some towing or traveling fully laden or with lots of kit on board, then you might want to look at the 170 watt option. Gearbox is nice, easy, snickety, if that's a word. Um, yeah, it feels very easy to live with, very smooth. It's got all the usual kit, electric windows, electric mirrors, all that kind of thing. Um, and a nice clear instrument display. I like the fact that the Speedo um, is a digital display right in the middle in addition to the, to the dial. I think that's quite useful. It also displays the current speed limit just above it. So that's quite a useful reminder if you've got a bit of a, a lead right foot, guilty. Very refined, refined and comfortable seats are the two things that really stand out. Yeah, the driving position is excellent. Uh, I've got it quite low down, I like the steering wheel quite far back towards me. Um, but the ergonomics are excellent. Handles well, there's not a lot of body roll. When it hits a pothole, it's quite controlled on the suspension. The damping's really good. One thing you do get with the Toyota cab, you do get quite a lot of kit as standard. It opens in the usual way with a plipper, and then you just press the clutch, and press the start button, and away it goes. Sat-nav system fitted as standard, as well as DAB radio, which sounds great. Uh, various vehicle parameters that can be changed. This one is for personalizing audio settings. So you can have different profiles for different drivers. Um, this one's a mirror link for your uh, smartphone. So you can have your smartphone apps all on this touch screen. So uh, you can make it more intuitive to use. Obviously it, it syncs with all your Bluetooth contacts in your phone. You've also got down here, place to charge it. You've got a USB point and you've got a 12 volt socket. Heating controls, all pretty intuitive. Temperature, fan speed, and various directions of um, airflow. This one here contro controls heated rear screen and it also puts your mirrors on, uh, heated mirrors on. Uh, obviously it's got air cab air conditioning as standard, which is well worth having if you plan to visit anywhere hot. Um, or if we're lucky with the, a British summer. Steering wheel controls. Again, you can activate a lot of the stereo functions here. You can go up and down there, you can select volume, you can do various of the presets. So that's, that's uh, well worth having. It mirrors it all. Um, yeah, it has a lot of kit as standard. Very impressive. When you first vi uh, fire the vehicle up, the dials do a nice little dance and uh, it goes through various settings on the center screen. I'll just scroll through these so you can have a so you can have it on mile per hour if you'd like. 
can have it on um, giving you map directions, various parameters, your economy. We've been thrashing it around, so uh, it'll do better economy than that on a run. Don't worry about that. Really clear, easy to read instruments. Um, I think you've also got um, cruise control, um, which is a useful function. Cruise speed too slow. We're stationary in a campsite. I'm not surprised. Okay, you've got uh, auto lights. You've got auto wipers. So both functions that are great for lazy people like me. I love functions like that. Anything that um, immediately wipes the screen when you've got spray from a truck as you go past it uh, is well worth having as a safety feature. And auto lights are great. It saves you fumbling around for switches if you suddenly go into uh, a tunnel uh, and there's no illumination on it. So all useful stuff. Okay, swiveling the cab seat. So how do you activate the swivel mechanism? Very simple, make sure the car's in gear so it won't roll away. Release the handbrake. You then need to push this lever back and the seat will start to turn. It's easiest to do the next bit out of the seat. So I'll just show you from a different angle how to flip it round. With the seat mechanism released, all you need to do is we take the seat round. Sometimes you need to put the backrest forwards. So just angle it round a little bit. Sometimes you need to push the steering wheel in. Uh, there we go. And then just bring it forward a bit. And there you go, that's the seat. Driver's seat swiveled. The passenger seat swivel works in exactly the same way. So just release the catch, turn it round. You might need to make the backrest a bit more upright, but it simply swivels round. And once you've got it fully rotated, slide it back, adjust the backrest, good to go. Before you raise the roof, you need to open the side door. This is to allow the air to rush in. If you just try and open the roof without any doors open, uh, it won't work. So you need to open a door. Then you need to release these catches, these straps. Very simple, just, just like a luggage strap, just pull it out. Don't pull it fully through. There's a reason for that, I'll show you in a minute. With both catches released, just push your roof upwards and gas struts will take over and it'll naturally go up. The roof bed just pushes up out of the way. You can then put whatever memory foam or whatever bedding you want on there. You've also got this handy screen that clips up. I haven't ignored the safety things either. And you've got carbon monoxide uh, detector and a smoke alarm. Um, there's also, under here, there's a nice on-off switch which controls that light up there. With the roof up, you've got a um, clear vinyl window at the front. That's lots of light in and a bit of ventilation, got two meshed windows at the side. So you get plenty of ventilation through the van, which is always a good thing. Uh, it's also an option to have this roof bed deleted if you don't want it. And you can have it replaced by um, shelving panels that allow you a bit of uh, campsite storage. So that's another uh, option. You also get a ladder for access to the roof, but realistically, most people will leave this at home because it does take up quite a bit of storage space. Remember to leave the straps long. The reason why is it makes it a lot easier to pull the roof down. So just grab hold of it. It makes it easier to reach the grab handle if you're smaller. So you can either pull down with these or reach up and grab the grab handle. So kitchen equipment, what have we got? Well, we've got the usual glass lids covering a Dometic twin burner hob, cold water tap. Um, this one, look, it's auto ignition. Um, gas blocker is in the back. I'll show you that uh, a bit later. So you get all usual fare. The fridge is a good sized um, Bitrifrigo unit, 29 litres. So that's ample space. It's a compressor fridge, runs off 12 volt. 
This fan's got a solar panel on the roof as standard um, and a decent capacity leisure battery. So minimal electricity use. All the lighting too, uh, just pop on, you can't be seen in the sunlight, but all the lighting is LED. You've got roof lights, you've got um, lights around the circumference of the roof when it's up. You've also got a light in the roof bed which can be switched on and off here. So that's quite good. Uh, switch them off. You've also got a 240 volt socket that's um, active uh, when you're on a mains hookup and a uh, 6 amp 12 volt socket. So ideal for charging uh, phones or powering whatever 12 volt gadgets you've got, perhaps DVD player on the move, that kind of thing. You can get more sockets and Wellhouse can easily add those uh, at a later stage. You've also got good storage. There's a cutlery drawer here. A big cupboard here. Uh, you can put all sorts of bits and bobs in there. You can fit a chemical loo in there uh, if you wanted. You've also got an extra cabinet there which you can fit a few bits and bobs in. And I'll show you the other cabinets when we're in the bed mode. The other thing that's worth mentioning about the kitchen is you do have, it's quite deep, and you do have quite a bit of worktop space. That isn't always the case in camper vans, and it's quite useful. Um, you might want to plug your kettle on here if you're on 240 volt, uh, mugs, things like that, preparing a plate of food. Uh, it's useful to have a little bit of worktop space. It's always at a premium in a camper van, uh, and you often have to use the table, so it's quite good to have a bit of worktop space and quite a deep worktop. You can put mugs sort of on the edge here, around the back of it, so there's plenty of uh, worktop space given the size of the vehicle. Bear in mind it's only 4.95 metres long, so similar in size to a, a short wheelbase uh, Volkswagen. Rear travel seat, once the catches are released, the rear seat can slide forwards and backwards, just sort of walk it forwards and backwards with your feet. It's as simple as that. And the seat itself is quite a heavy, solid, durable unit. Uh, it's a crash tested unit. Uh, it's tested to TUV standards uh, in Germany, so it meets all sort of your relevant European regs. Right, making the bed up at night time. I'll show you how to do it. First of all, lift up the seat base, flip it through 180 degrees, pull this lever, fold the bed flat. That's it, easy as that. Okay, the bed is six foot two long. Uh, it's three foot seven at its widest point and three foot at its narrowest point at the foot end. It's nicely padded. I don't think you need any memory foam to cover it. And it's good that it you don't sleep on the seating face. So it saves some of the wear and tear on the seats. It makes it more durable. Uh, in terms of storage space, you've got a wardrobe here, quite a deep one. Uh, you could shelve it out and you've got a second wardrobe here. Both of those have hanging rails, and obviously you've still got access to the kitchen cabinets. One thing I do like, you get a bit cold in the night, you can still reach all the heating controls. It's also easy to get, switch the lights on and off. So quite an easy vehicle to live with. Um, inside the wardrobe, you've got all your power connections. So you've got all your 240 RCDs and all your fuses, 12 volt fuses, which as you can see, are all clearly labeled. So that's useful. In the morning, just pull the seat up with these two straps. Flip the base through 180 degrees. Grab those two seat belts. Grab the two seat belts. Pop the base into place. And that's it. We're in daytime mode again. You can use the rear storage area in a number of ways. This seat by this can be used as a rear parcel shelf easily flips up and you can increase your lounge space by pulling it back or push it all the way forwards to gain maximum boot space it all depends how you want to use it in here you've got an additional locker and you've also got another locker here which is for a camping gas 907 so quite a small cylinder, but you're not going to use a lot of gas because you're only going to be using it for the hob. So it should be very economical on gas. But yeah, loads of storage space in here can be used in lots of flexible ways. Great.
So, what's my verdict? Well, Toyota is a great base vehicle. It drives really well, comfortable seats, feels refined and polished on the road, no squeaks or rattles, very pleasant to live with. 4.95 metres long, so barely longer than a family car, very easy to live with. It's got a five year warranty as standard, and it's matched by Wellhouse's five year habitation warranty, which is great. Love the sliding seat, that's really flexible and practical. Kitchen layout's all practical, roof goes up and down easily. I can see why it won the Caravan and Motorhome Club's Design Awards back in 2018. This is every inch an award winning camper van. Excellent, like a lot.